Hey guys, Dr. Wajib here. I'm an IMG working as a core surgical trainee in the UK. And today I'm going to take you through the surgical training pathway in the UK and tell you what are the points of entry for IMGs. So without further ado, let's begin. Now, if you're someone that's pursuing a career in surgery, you can either go down the clinical route or the academic route. I'm not going to be talking about the academic route in this video. So if you're starting off in a clinical role, you can either go down the non-training pathway or the training pathway. If you're someone that's going to be working in a training pathway, then you will encounter either run through training programs that you only apply for once and then come out a specialist or uncoupled training programs like core surgical training and then higher surgical training. If you're going to go down the non-training route, you'll still have the same clinical responsibilities as a trainee, but in terms of building up your portfolio, you'll be able to set your own timelines and your job title may be referred to as an SAS doctor, LED, staff grade or trust grade. Now, this is what the training pathway is going to look like for a UK graduate pursuing surgical training. You start off with five years of medical school then two years of foundation training, and then you decide if you're going to go straight into a run through training program for the next eight years, or you're going to do an uncoupled training program like core surgical training for about two years and then decide on your specialty of choice for the next six years in higher surgical training. Now, what are the points of entry for IMGs? Well, you can enter at four points. You can either enter in foundation training. Now, if you're entering at an FY1 or FY2 level, then I'd recommend checking out the UK FPO website, which is going to have a plethora of information about the eligibility criteria for these roles. However, if you're planning on entering at any other level, then the HEE website or the NHS England website is a great website to check out. I'll leave links to both these websites in the description below. Now let's talk about what programs actually utilize run through training versus higher specialty training. So you can see from the slide here that general surgery, urology, ENT, ortho, beads, vascular surgery, plastic surgery, and oromaxillofacial utilize the uncoupled training program. So you have to do two years of core surgical training and then you apply for higher surgical training in one of these specialties. However, if you're pursuing neurosurgery, cardiothoracic surgery, or oromaxillofacial surgery, then you apply for a run-through training program. Note that OMFS has both run-through training and uncoupled training available, and neurosurgery, I believe you can enter at an ST1 and an ST2 level. These are the specialties that are involved in the national recruitment process. However, there are other training programs available. An example would be NHS Scotland recruiting for orthopedics, in a run through fashion. So it is always wise to check out Oriel for any other adverts that may appear for other training programs not mentioned in the whole national recruitment process. Now let's start with some key requirements you need to be aware of if you're considering entering the training system at each level. For example, if you've just completed your medical school and haven't completed an acceptable house job, then you could qualify for the two-year foundation program. You would, however, need an IELTS, FLAP1, FLAP2, provisional GMC registration, and the clinical assessment exam. Now, note that I've put an asterisk before the IELTS because not everyone is going to have to take the exam. There are other ways to prove your English proficiency. And I've put an asterisk before clinical assessment as well. Not everyone will have to take this exam. It'll be determined during the eligibility selection process when you apply for your foundation program. Say if you've completed uh, an acceptable pattern of internship, then you could apply for an F2 standalone program. Again, you'd need IELTS, OET, FLAB1, FLAB2, GMC, full GMC registration, SJT, and the ILS or ALS course done. Again, this is just a highlight of the most important evidences that you need to gather. The best source of information would be the UK FBO website. These requirements do change from year to year. So be sure to familiarize yourself with that website and for the latest information on there. Now, say if you're entering core surgical training, the most important things to be aware of is that you'll need to be fully GMC registered. You can do that by passing the PLAB exams, MRCS exams, or even the USMLE exams. See which exams suit your personal circumstances the most. You will need to have a crest form if you haven't completed foundation program in the UK. If you've completed a foundation program in the UK, you will be awarded a FPCC certificate, but say if you haven't completed foundation training, then you would have to get the crest form signed before you're eligible to apply for core surgical training. Unfortunately, the MSRA exam looks like it's here to stay. If you're long listed for core surgical training, then you will have to set this exam and it will determine whether you get an interview invite or not. And finally, you need to have less than 18 months of surgical experience post house job. So those are some of the key requirements that you should be aware of. Next, 
If you are considering entering at the higher surgical training level, then you will need full GMC registration. In addition, you will need to have the crest form. Now this is this crest form is different from the crest form you were utilizing for core surgical training because this one's gonna be certificate of readiness to enter higher surgical training. And of course you will have need to clear both parts of the MRCS exam. And if you're applying for run through training, then again, you'll need full GMC registration, you'll need the crest form, but you may or may not need the MSRA exam depending on which specialty you apply for. For example, neurosurgery does utilize the MSRA, but otomaxillofacial surgery doesn't. Again, you can find the most up-to-date information for the recruitment process on the HEE website, which I have left a link to in the description below. So now I'm going to run you through possible options that an IMG might utilize to enter surgical training in the UK. Say if this person completes their medical school, they could potentially apply for foundation year one training. But in this example, I'm going to say that they complete their house job in their home country. From there, they have two options. They can either pursue residency in their home country or they can start a non-training job in their home country called an MO ship. Now, during their non-training job, they may decide to move to the UK and start working towards the, building their portfolio and getting the full GMC registration. And once they have full GMC registration and a job, they can move to the UK and start in a non-training role at an F2 level, SD1 level, CT1 level. Now, once they're in the UK in a non-training role, they could try and get their crest form signed. And if they have less than 18 months experience in surgery total after their house job, then they could apply for core surgical training. That is generally the typical route that people use to enter core surgical training. This is something that I personally use to enter core surgical training. Now, say if I wanted to skip the middleman, one option I could utilize is to get full GMC registration, get the crest form signed, and directly ap apply for core surgical training if I have less than 18 months experience post house job, which is something that you guys can look into if, if you want to pursue core surgical training and don't want to do a non-training job beforehand. My personal recommendation is to try and do a non-training job because core surgical training is very intense and an IMG generally does need some time to settle into the system. It might get very overwhelming if you start directly in a training role, but it is perfectly possible. I have seen people who go directly into training and smash it as well. Now, say you completed your core surgical training, the next step in the process for you would be to apply for higher surgical training. You could choose not to apply for higher surgical training and just go into a non-training job as well if you didn't want to pursue surgical training any further at this point. Now, go. let's go back to the resident who has completed their residency in their home country. If they wanted to apply for core surgical training, they would be overqualified because they have more than 18 months experience in surgery. So what they can instead do is get full GMC registration. It would be sensible to use the MRCS route at this point and get their crest form signed, that certificate of readiness to enter higher specialty training, and then apply for a higher special training directly. Again, this would mean starting at an SD3 level in a completely new country. It may get really overwhelming going straight into training. So for these people as well, what they can do is apply for a non-training job first. This would again be at a registrar grade level, but at least you wouldn't have the additional portfolio requirements that come with a training job. So in order to get a non-training job after having completed your residency back home, you could just clear the MRCS exams, get full GMC registration, and go into a non-training job that way. Once you've entered the non-training job and you're used to the system, you could get your crest form signed and then apply for higher surgical training. People that complete the higher surgical training in their final years are going to take the FRCS exam and if they complete the FRCS successfully, then they will have achieved a certificate of completion of training, which is CCT. Now they can work as a consultant. Say if someone had completed residency back home and now had gotten a non-training job in the UK, but didn't want to enter higher specialty training. One option for them would be to use the CSER route where you control how fast you gather the evidence. And then after clearing the FRCS exam, you submit all your evidence to the panel. And once you clear the process, you you can essentially work as a consultant in the UK as well. So you can see that there are many ways of entering surgical training in the UK. It is not impossible. It is very much possible at various different stages in your career, but it is a lot of hard work. And this does not encompass all possibilities. There are going to be people that have different circumstances. And while this diagram might help cover 
essentially the vast majority of people, it won't account for every single unique circumstance because people are going to have various different experiences and they're going to get GMC registration in various different ways and they're going to enter the system at different stages. But generally speaking, this would be a broad overview of how an IMG can enter the system and pursue surgical training. I couldn't account for every single person's personal circumstances, but I do want to help out as many IMGs as I possibly can. So if you have any further questions, drop them in the comments below or DM me on Instagram and I will try my best to answer every single question I can about core surgical training. Oh.